Rachel, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really excited. I'm excited. Oh, take place. Oh, I'm excited that you're here because you totally speak my language. I told you that before we started, like some of the yeah. words um, in, in the show notes that you sent me, like self-healing, transformation, new paradigm, legacy. I, I just, that's my jam. It keeps coming up. So I would just love to dive in and, you know, maybe ask you first, how did you get attracted or start doing this type of work related to these topics? Oh God, that's such a, um, it wasn't a sudden linear experience. Okay. It was, it, it really has been an unfolding emergence mm. of healing through opening and awakening my own heart and coming to live my own legacy mm. now rather than waiting and it's just been a really organic process. There isn't like a moment in time. Okay. Evolutionary lifelong process of growing, expanding and morphing. Mm, I love that. The growing. My... <laughs> I love that. The growing and the expanding and, and morphing. I feel like I've been on that journey as well. And I really love how you said it's not linear. Because like I'm working behind the scenes on something with people and they're like, you need to put it in a linear process. And I get that. And the mind works that way. But healing isn't necessarily linear, is it? Um, like this deeper work. Maybe you could speak to that. You froze a little bit. You said oh. healing isn't necessarily linear. And... and people don't really understand that, right? They want a linear process, but the, the healing... Yeah. Process it's not very linear necessarily. Maybe yeah. we can that a little I more. Love, I love that you're pointing us in this direction because this is directly connected to the new paradigm of mm -hmm. healing. Okay. Because the, the, the old paradigm suggests, and we've all been taught and we've been, you know, cycling around on these endless healing journeys of, um, you know, having an experience, uncovering a shadow, something that is a block, a resistance, and, you know, subconsciously or consciously saying to ourselves, okay, I have to heal this thing. And when I heal it, then I'll be okay. That so so it's it's got a linear flavor to it where there's a beginning and there's an end. And there's everything in between and with the with, with this paradigm of healing it does keep us cycling in mm -hmm. these loop the relief that comes through release mm -hmm. experience yeah and what we haven't learned is to replace what we release and so therefore you know experiencing this deep healing journey experiencing mm -hmm. this deep relief this deep release and then um carrying on and then the next trigger arrives boom we're right back into the 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 um default mm -hmm. because we haven't embodied the healing and because the healing hasn't necessarily occurred on an embodied cellular level and so the transformation has been has has happened par partially mm -hmm. to say that in the new paradigm what we're looking at here is an ever evolving non-linear ever expanding generative energy healing as an energy healing as an evolutionary process that has no beginning or end but that expands integrates expands integrates expands more integrates and as this generative process occurs there's like this ongoing self-healing that we you know, ad adopt these skills and utilize tools to be able to um, not fix something. Mm -hmm. Because the old paradigm of healing is really steeped in the 
question that there's something to fix. And when I fix right. it, then I'll, then I'll be healed. And what we're moving into, and I feel I know, and I've seen this over and over with clients and with experiences in myself, because nothing I ever take clients to, through is something I've not, you know, ex been experiencing in myself, is that um, the integration and embedding this true, 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 deep, deep, bone deep, knowing that we are already whole. So there's nothing to fix. Mm -hmm. And people often say, no, no, I don't think I'm broken. And yet the, the, the action or, you know, how, how one responds to triggers, for instance, in real life is so indicative that there's this underlying really, really sneaky belief in there somewhere under the radar that there's something to fix. Therefore, there's something wrong with me. And mm -hmm. um, it's really, it's really un an unconscious thing. So it's, it's really interesting that you brought that up because it is not linear. It's just like expansive and it there's, it's infinite. Hmm. It, yeah. it is infinite. And I, and I love like, so when you said the word generative, I light up with that word. I think it's, yeah. that is part of the new paradigm and in, in my, the way I vision or feel it or see it too. So I, I appreciate that. I also love that you shared about um, fixing that word that's been coming up. I did a, a, a very short video quite a while ago, inspired by someone else, but this old paradigm that we're leaving, we're leaving the forcing, the fixing and the fighting. And you just, you so nailed it about the fixing. And I mean, I was someone who grew up in that space, always thinking something was wrong with me. I mean, that was, here. yeah. And it we wasn't even, right, exactly. It wasn't even a subconscious thing. It became subconscious, but I can remember each of my parents being like, what's wrong with you? Right. And ah. the time that I said that to one of my kids, when they were younger, I was like, Oh, where did that come from? That's where it is in the subconscious. But I, many of us feel that, but that you're coming from a place of wholeness is such an alignment. I pulled up, I, went down to a prayer book that I have. I, I wanted to share this. You've probably heard this, but the medicine woman prayer, it says, I will not rescue you for you are not powerless. I will not fix you because you are not broken. I will not heal you for I see in you your wholeness. And I will walk with you through the darkness as you remember your light. And you just like, I felt like you just spoke to that, that um, for anybody that was, is listening was written by Sherry Bliss Tisley, not by me, but I, I use that as a guide with clients and for myself too, because it's easy for me. I don't know how it is for you. You've been doing this work for a long time to sometimes fall back to the old paradigm. Although I want to fix it. Right. And, and I have to remind myself that's not my job. And I actually don't even heal. I'm just this catalyst or this guy. Right. I don't know. Um, in the work that you do, how do you, how do you approach that? Do you feel like you are a healer? Or more of a coach, like when you, as we go into this new paradigm, are there different words that you're using or people are using? I facilitate healing. I facilitate okay. self healing. I, I don't, I can't heal. I, I, I can't, I'm not here and I cannot heal someone else. Mm -hmm. um, it, as a healer, I activate mm -hmm. the highest light in others. Okay and facilitate self-healing for others. And that's where the empowerment occurs. Self-empowerment and deep, deep, unshakable self-belief begins to emerge. Hmm. How yeah. do you, how do um, people that come to you, are they struggling with a certain particular set of issues or is it just very broad, you know, the type of people that find you in your work? The people, that the type of people that find me and um, work with me mm -hmm. are ready to embark on the next phase of their spiritual journey. They've been on a spiritual I'm understanding of frequency and energetics and know that there is some tweaking, that there is some um, amplification that, that is available mm -hmm. to amplify their frequency okay. so that, you know, they meet themselves mm -hmm. and feel the internal freedom that is available. Yes. It translates to magnetism. It tra because they're resonating and speaking directly from the highest heart 
speak. That is my signature program is, is the harp speak. And, um, so yeah, they're ready to, you know, unlock on, unblock and move forward in their journey so that they can, you know, find themselves, meet themselves, not even find themselves because they, they have, there, there's nothing to find, Mm -hmm. but meet themselves and therefore through their own deep transformation, they're able to provide deeper transformation for their clients. That is sustainable because sustainability is such a such a huge component of this work. It it moves far beyond mindset work. Mm-hmm. Thank you for saying that. I, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Can you touch a little bit more on that, on what creates sustainability for someone in this work? Because it is beyond mindset. Like what are some other components yeah. perhaps? I believe, I I know that we are, you know, people talk about being multidimensional, right? But what does Mm -hmm. that mean? And multidimensionality is, you know, accessing the higher intelligences that are, um, that that are multidimensional. So a lot around the mental intelligence, the mind's intelligence, Mm -hmm. and we have beyond the body intelligence, we have the heart intelligence, the intuitive intelligence, the imaginal intelligence, the sensory intelligence. And so the harmonization of all of those intelligences Mm -hmm. and um, the, the, the way that those intelligences come to be fully understood and integrated into the operating system creates sustainability. Otherwise, if you're addressing the mindset only, the the mind intelligence only, the other parts of the system, the whole system, Mm -hmm. don't uh, contribute to the full spectrum of highest potentiality. Mm. That that's really beautiful. And I, I appreciate that you said that I, I work with four of the levels, probably more, but you know, mindset, heart set, soul set, which is what I feel like you're speaking to with some of the multidimensionality. Um, and from there, even developing new skill sets. And so, do, you know, it sounds like the people that come to you are ready for that. But do you find that um, sharing sometimes with people who are not ready for that, that it's, it's hard to convey this or more and more people waking up to this new paradigm and being willing to go beyond mindset and look at these other things. I, I, what I'm seeing and experiencing is that more and more people, yes, absolutely. You're so right. Are waking up to this and it's like there's an awakening and then there's this next, um, space, you know, inside themselves, this next level of desire inside themselves to then uh, bring those awakenings to life and to actually okay. apply those awakenings in in life, you know, okay. because the life field is the schoolroom, the life field is the greatest informant for mm-hmm. how to pull those um, pieces of ourselves that we're awakening to mm-hmm. and make them applicable and, and not make them applicable, but invite invite ourselves in these dimensionalities within ourselves to honor what the life field is giving us in service of our expansion. So yeah, more and more people are, um, that's one thing. This is the Mm -hmm. second thing I want to speak to about that is, um, and the second thing is that those who are attracted to this work Mm -hmm. are, I always say, and I've been coming to to know this more and more, especially in the last six months, okay. is that I I don't um, I don't look for my clients. I don't do things in order to get clients or okay. to attract people. I feel them. Mm. I feel them soul to soul, and tuning into this deep energetic connection and this, you know, it's really this web, right? The quantum Mm -hmm. web of consciousness tuning into them that way. They, they hear me and I hear them. And that's, you know, where that term out of the blue comes from, because it literally is out of the blue, like the deep, dark blue of the unseen. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
Yeah. Mm, I love yeah. that. The dark blue, the unseen. It, it makes it sound more inviting because sometimes when some of us think of the unseen, we think of dark and black and scary. But the way you described it, the blue, it's just like blue is very mm. inviting. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're both wearing blue. That's yeah. right. That's right. And this is a significant part of the work is unseen <clears throat> where the freedom, the true freedom really lies. Right. With you know, and, and, and releasing and allowing that the fear of the unseen and the unknown to fall away. And people talk about that all the time, but how in, you know, in, in this work and in my experience, it has to be felt, it has to be experienced viscerally, cellularly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have, uh, and I'm in alignment with that. I, I really do believe it has to be felt as well. Do you have any tips you can offer or a, a short exercise of how people can feel or tap into feeling if they're not familiar um, or able well, to the, do it. the simplest and yet most potent um, mm -hmm. starting point for someone who is asking this question is really you know like we are so we are it's, we, we we are the heartbeat of the universe like we are the highest expression of the heartbeat of of the universe and the heartbeat of mother earth and so the heart is mm -hmm. the communication portal and the ex the, the 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 greatest most powerful portal that can offer us this experience of feeling ourselves feeling ourselves as humans in these human bodies but to really mm -hmm you know, simple, simple, yet if you really tune in, so powerful to put your hand on your heart and feel the heart beat. And all of the thought processes that surround the heartbeat, like all the thinking and all the, the, the senses dropping in even deeper and dropping into the, the essence of that heartbeat is a way to really open yourself up to feel and feel what's within yourself that is unspoken and, and unseeable and that you can't describe, but you can feel. Mm -hmm. And the heart speak work is, is really so profound because it's about hearing because in those spaces of such quiet and the still points, mm -hmm. heartbeats throughout the heartbeats. Yeah. That these still points offer up so much wisdom and the heart speaks to you. And uh, when you hear your heart speak there, the, 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 the wisdom that's available is, it isn't kidding. And so often, you know, like we hear, you know, we have these intuitive hits or we hear our heart speak to us, or we hear these messages mm -hmm. and we don't listen. We don't trust that Guilty. <laughs> you can listen and that it actually holds so much substance for us Yeah, because we just, you know, flip back into the external so quickly. So mm. this is really a process of um, coming to know the truest language of the heart. Mm. I yeah. so appreciate that. You know, when I first started interviewing for this show, I talked a lot about the heart energy and yeah. I've done a couple of episodes and it's it, you, what you said about your clients finding you, or you just kind of find each other. I feel like the same thing has happened to us. You know, we, yeah. we connected, yes. but it wasn't, and it was like, yes, let's have you on the show. But I didn't dive into really what you did until last night and this morning, even more and more. And like I said, at the beginning, those words really resonate with me, but so does the energy of the heart. And I, I'm mm. moderating on clubhouse with a few women and um, a male friend of ours. And and I when I talk about the heart, he's like, Kat, you gotta go to the mind. And I'm like, ah, yes, yeah. but there's limitations there. We have to bring the heart into. And I feel like it's, you know, all that speak about the, the heart, the head heart coherence too, of yes. how to connect and work together. It's not one or the other, but the heart really is more powerful when it comes to wisdom. Um, I well, believe it's, it in some way. I, yeah, I do too. I agree 100% because every impulse of wisdom comes mm -hmm. through the heart first, then it moves up to the brain. And then the brain filters it based on the lens that it knows based on the old paradigm. So it's yeah, the every impulse it just and if you think about it, the, the heart, the heart pulses, it has this mm -hmm. 
really, really powerful capacity to pulse yeah. wisdom. It does. So when we go into this newer paradigm that we've been moving into um, and work with the heart energy, is, are there other things you can tell us about this or about the new paradigm that um, speaks to you, you know, and how we can really live in a state of wholeness and fulfillment? Well, I will say that it is a process. Okay. It is a process of unlearning like truly, and, and having the willingness, and this is another quality of client people that I work with, is the willingness to um, unlearn, the willingness to have a beginner's mind, even though, you know, so many are so highly tuned, mm -hmm. the, the, the filter of the mind that filters all the attunement okay. is needing to unlearn. And it's, it's, so it's, it's an unlearning and it's a process and it's, uh, it's, it's also a, um, one of the things that I have discovered for myself and then have been sharing. And this has been in the, this has evolved in the last year, I'd say more than ever before. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, back to your very first question, right? How did this all start? It's like, yeah. Who knows birth, you know, and then in this last year, I've had some uh, miraculous downloads and it, it, all kinds of really powerful information come through on the heels of having a major surgery where I was rejecting the medication. So I had no pain relief, physical pain relief. Oh, wow. so I had no choice, but to turn into the wisdom of the body, the healing wow. wisdom. And I taught myself to literally open my cells. And this is, you know, all the, the human condition is such that our cells are closed. You know, mm -hmm. the cell receptors have closed through traumatic events in our lives and throughout these crystallizing moments. And we walk around with, with our cells closed, cautious, on alert, mm -hmm. you know, anxious. And I taught myself how to reopen them and receive. And what I received was pain relief. And I was blown away because I was, the, the pain was, was a, a lot of it was caused through the, the, the mind's interpretation of the physical pain okay. that was there. So I had these, so I experienced these moments and glimpses of pain relief. So I kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And that's how I got through those three or four days. Okay. And then, you know, it was the catalyst for creating the cellular wealth embodied activations that I've been doing in the last year that have opened people's uh, capacity for and, and created a tool for them to open their cells. And, you know, it's not only uh, uh, an exercise in opening your cells and then feeling the, the relief of the pain and the suffering that we've been holding energetically but also becoming an open channel. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love so much about this work is, you know, people who want to uh, grow their ability to channel, you do it cellularly. In my experience, that's, okay. that's all I'll ever bring forward is what comes through my own divine experience. Okay, that's interesting. So, I like that. I love the word open channel. Um, so the the cellular wealth activation is that, am I saying it correctly? Cellular wealth embodiment activation. Embodiment, activation. Yeah. embodiment um, is everything. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to speak any more to that? Cause I was going to, I wrote that down on your notes to ask you about that. And you already started sharing on it. I'm fascinated by it. I think it's, it's very curious and very empowering. Um, mm -hmm. It is, it's, um, it's, it, and it's also generative, you know, okay. back to that word and expansive, whereby when you, you know, learn how to consciously, intentionally, purposefully open your cells, there's a visceral experience. You feel your cells opening, you feel them vibrating at okay. a higher frequency. You mm -hmm. feel them vibrating faster. You feel the light inside of you. And I, you know, that's why I have come to, uh, really um, call myself and also embody as a light activator because it activates mm -hmm. your light. Yeah. That's what it means cellularly to activate your lights, your light. And um, 
you know, so this process of opening cellularly and receiving the divine wisdom and the divine love and the divine support and the divine protection and having a, a visceral experience of being divinely held breeds so much deep trust mm -hmm. in God that you already are, you know, we've, I've, we've been created through the consciousness of love of God. And so it's this connection point with and in trust of um, embodying this yeah. wealth that exists within us, this wealth of connection with God, this and the, and the freedom that that vibrates mm -hmm. in that frequency, this wealth of connection with joy with bliss, with gratitude. And all of these, these are heart keys mm -hmm. that um, un really unlock the door when they become embodied and they are beyond words. And that's where the heart speak is so, uh, it is so steeped in the truth that words are power. Every mm -hmm. word is a field of energy and mm -hmm. can grow and morph and generate and become you know, when you say I'm confident, how you embody that is mm -hmm. you bring it into your body. So we bring words into the body to actually right. to activate the light of the essence of, of those words that are, you know, they are heart keys. So I love, I love that yeah. you call them heart keys. That's uh, yeah. that really lights me up and resonates. And um, I also like how you said, because, you know, I've heard the phrase like everything we say is a prayer, but sometimes when I use the word prayer, that's what turns off people. But the way you said it differently and you didn't use that word, but everything we speak, like we're speaking things into existence. Yes. Fruition. Yes. Right? Um, yes. Regardless of how you want to define it or label it. That's, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. doing powerful work in the world, like helping yes. people activate their light. Cause I, I mean, I believe we are light beings. We are yes. light and we are, can grow the capacity to hold more light. Yeah. We, we help other people more and more. Um, we are getting short on time and I could talk about light forever. I wanted to ask you about your books if you wanted to touch on them for a minute. The one sitting behind you, True Gifts, is that the first book ah, that you wrote? That is the first, yeah, that is the okay. uh, first book that I wrote, True Gifts, Ignite Your Soul Magic and Monetize the Highest Expression of Your Purpose. That book I wrote a few years ago. Okay. And it feels like, that was like the, you know, the definitely it is definitely the primary book of all the skills and tools. And it's, it's done in a workshop style, actually. Oh, cool. And uh, yeah, and it really speaks to um, those who are seeking deeper purpose, who are seeking mm -hmm. to contribute, who are seeking to really step into their legacy. And, um, you know, are looking for support and guidance around that. And it's sort of a culmination of all the work that I had done to that point. I was a career um, practitioner taking people on deep career exploration journeys for 20 years. So that's okay. like the culmination of that blended with the spiritual component because okay. at the same, during the same 20 years, I've, I was on a spiritual journey as well. And the second book is going is diving deep into what we've been talking about and just really this is just touching the surface you know in mm -hmm. the in the area of in the arena of the new paradigm and mm -hmm. shifting this new paradigm okay making that shift into the new paradigm cellularly energetically spiritually mm -hmm. and it Through sounds like that is a very conscious and deliberate choice right yeah. to to yeah. do that and to go that route um yeah. When your new book comes out, I would love to have you back to talk more about it. Okay, um, and, sounds you know, great. That would be awesome. The one thing we didn't talk a lot about is legacy. We we started off with that, and you mentioned it. Um, it seems to me that if people really want to leave a, a legacy that that really matters to them, doing this work can be really powerful and help them with that. Is that yes accurate? Yeah. Well, it's it's you know it's, 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 it brings all of the pieces of 
the highest authentic expression of who we are because we're learning to really tune in, open ourselves, receive who we are. Mm -hmm. And it's living the legacy through the highest expression now, you know, okay. and embodying our highest divinity now mm -hmm. rather than praying about it at night and then living out the day doing all the things it's embodying it in its full integration and doing that now is living our legacy now oh I like that so just being yeah. it, right so how yeah. what is your living legacy or you want people to remember you by now that you've been on this journey oh, well I really it's about changing the structure, changing the very internal conversation that dictates the quality of our life. Mm -hmm. And that conversation, and, and as we alter this internal conversation viscerally in our mm -hmm. bones, in our cells, it then, you know, it, it acts to amplify the highest expression of who we are in service of, you know, awakening the hearts of humanity is truly my deepest desire. And that's what I'm doing, you know, one human heart at a time. One heart at a time. And collectively, the ripple effect is massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just got chills. And, and I really, I feel that and I believe that like the collective consciousness is waking up to that, that deep our heartbeat in a way that we can um, tap in and help each other shift for the highest good like you said so I, I love that if, I, and I appreciate your time and energy and being here if thank you, you so know much. more you're welcome if people want to know more about you or connect to you um, I will have some stuff in the show notes but please where can they find you where are the best places to they can find me on Facebook Jewel okay. Beach okay and they can find me on Instagram heart underscore healers underscore unite Ooh. and i have if if anyone wants to have a sample or an experience of my work i have a free seven day paradigm shifting series that is it's a video series and okay. um, i can put the link or i can send you the link okay that'd be great I'd like to add that and that will give people a an experience of what of what we're talking about here. And okay. um, the, the seven days, six of the seven days, go into heart keys, mm -hmm. and embodying okay. these heart keys. And the first day is a deep talk about the new paradigm, shifting into the new healing paradigm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I love that how you made the distinction to shifting into the new healing paradigm and how mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I, I believe like. And you spoke to it today, like frequency healing is the future. It's also now, like people are tapping in now. And I love that you kept using that word, but that I feel like is where we're going. So um, I hope sure people take advantage of, yes. you know, that generous offer. But thank you again, Joel, for being here. I, I would love to talk about this stuff. So definitely come back when your book is out and um, share more about it with us and how people can find it then. And I just appreciate your time and energy and your, you know, beautiful energy. I can feel your heart like right through the screen. So thank you. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm very grateful for this conversation today. Thank you uh -huh. so much, Kat. Oh, you're very welcome. And for all of you that are tuning in, thank you for watching to the end. Thank you for being here. We hope that there's been value for you and it has touched your heart and come back and see us next week or find us on YouTube or at creatrix.tv. Bye-bye for now.